What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This week we're back on dime bag. We are trying to finish up the bed. We are finally at the step to build our door. And man, I'm telling you, I'm scratching my head here. I've done four or five uh, wood beds in my day and every one's been different and every time it's another thing to figure out. I usually use piano hinges. They work great but they're not the best. There's a couple different things going on here with our bed that makes it kind of unique. And it's that the door is gonna be made out of metal, 16 gauge metal, perforated instead of the wood. So now my one inch tube steel has to sit up higher than my frame. Essentially it's gonna have to sit up, I don't know, maybe a 16th of an inch below the lip of our wood, which means our hinges are gonna have to be up high as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece of tube steel for our back section. I'm gonna go ahead and tack these bad boys on there and we're gonna kind of mock up our pivot point of our door and see what we got going on. What I did here is I designed some tabs that will allow our door frame to swing all the way up. These have a little extra height on them because like I said, this frame of this door has to sit up higher than the framing of our bed because we're not gonna have any wood on our door. We need to bring this up just below the top of the deck. So our 16 gauge finishes pretty flush with the top of our wood. So we're gonna go ahead and cut up some tabs like this. This is a 316 steel. These I just did out of eighth inch steel as a kind of as a test fit. So this one is good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up three more of these, clean them up, get this thing bolted together and do a dry run, get our height set, and then we'll go ahead and tack them onto this and we'll take the framing off, weld those things on and we'll go ahead and start building our frame. True value, I got me some plastic like washer, nylon washer, which will separate our bung from our tab. That'll give it a nice surface to slide on. I also cut some stainless steel washers here because I needed something kind of small to fit in there. So I cut those on the plasma table. You know, you don't really want like a painted bracket rubbing against our bolt. So that'll separate that. It will wear the paint off of this, but you know, part of the game. Then we have is our actual frame of our door. Then we have a piece of 16 gauge sandwiched in between these two pieces. So the 16 gauge will be our door, like our cover. So that's gonna get me my height. And I got this tube steel that overhangs the other one. That's basically gonna just sit down on here like so. And that's my height. So that's what you do when you're by yourself, man. You figure it out. So now I'll be able to, to center this all up, tack them in, and we'll take everything back apart. We'll get a nice weld on those, and we'll be able to move on. tabs welded onto our bed frame and our hinges are working pretty good. I didn't put any of the nylon washers on right now because it's just that extra step we don't need to do. So it's just all kind of loosely in there. So at this point, I go ahead and start cutting the rest of my tube steel. I'm gonna be taking this one back out to make a miter on this one. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my two long legs and then the back section piece. And then I'm gonna try to figure out if I need to add something in the middle. I'm kind of hoping not, but if I do, I do. Let's cut some metal.
go. We got our framing installed. It's working great. We got these two angles. I'm acting as little stops. I'm just uh, clamped on right now. We'll get welded on and I'll pull this back out. But uh, so far I am liking it. May have to do a little shimming on my wood back here to bring this up. So that way it's nice and level. But it's time. It is time to start making our cover. And I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start by cutting a piece of 16 gauge steel with a flange going down one inch. Right, the sheet metal cover is in and it fits like a glove. That might have been a little bit of luck with a lot of planning, but I'm stoked now. I was really worried that I was gonna have to alter it after it was bent and uh, I don't. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come underneath here and I'm gonna mark my frame rails all around. Then I'm gonna pull it back out. What I really need to do is throw some Clecos in it. So I probably, maybe I'll do that first. Throw a couple of Clecos on it and make sure we're able to go up freely. The only problems we may have is it, it may hit the wood back here, but I could cut the wood back a little bit more if I have to. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the Cleco out, throw about four, five, six of them there and open her up, see what goes on. Sweet, so uh, door is opening freely. I just put a little shim underneath our wood right here and just lightly sanded that down. There is a little gap here, which you know, it is what it is. I could probably add a little bit of metal back to this section right here so you don't see our hinge, but either way, gonna keep moving on. Now that I know our door is operating correctly, it's time to start laying out the section we're gonna be cutting out with a bead roll. So obviously I know these marks indicate the center of my frame. So what I gotta do is, if this is an inch frame, we're gonna call that an inch, figure out where our cut's gonna be. So, you know, we're gonna have a cut coming around, something like this. This is gonna be our perforated metal in here. So our B-roll is gonna lay out somewhere in here. Voila, one and done, man. I think it's gonna work out nice. It definitely kind of goes with our airlines. Just mind you, when you open this thing, you know, that's what, that's what you look at and then you close it, it's kind of the same sh spiel. Not to mention, this is all gonna be perforated in here and in this section. So, should look pretty cool. You know, so my bead roll is gonna be here, this way, and it's gonna come up. So this will be my cut line in here somewhere. So this will all be painted metal. Kind of give it a nice little design, nice accent. Bring some color into the bed. And it should gonna look nice. So let's do this, man. Pulling this out, doing some bead rolling. Ran into a little dilemma here with our bead roll. This panel is 30 inches wide by, let's just call it 41 inches long. The throat on our bead roller is only, I don't know, 18 inches or so. So we're not able to get, get the turn. So we're not able to get, continue our bead roll through this section right here. That's the biggest problem. The other problem is our flange is one inch and the, the depth of this throat is also one inch. So that made it a little difficult. I was gonna bead roll it first, but I thought it would be no issues. So. What we're gonna do is cut it in half. Bead rolling came out pretty solid. Fortunately, you know, I don't have to weld these panels back together. But keep in mind, these big sections here, all the way through there, are all getting cut out anyway, so. Really, I just gotta weld this spot, this spot, and that spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over on its back, and, or on its face, and we're going to get some tacks on it, 
and then we'll probably go ahead and start cutting out some material. Got our panels cut out, man. I gotta tell you, this was by far the best method of, dip, of cutting something like this that I've done yet. I'm a little worried about this. I know I gotta still add my perforated metal in here, but this is pretty flimsy. So, worst case scenario, I may have to build some framing in our door over there to kind of mock this up or just to give this a little support so it's not flopping around. But I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up clean up all these shards of metal. We got our door all built. I had it fit back in the truck yesterday. We wanna make a couple little adjustments, a couple minor things. I had a really hard time getting our bolts, our hardware into our bung here, just between this small little gap down here and everything going on. So I'm gonna clearance this back a little bit. Then I also <clears throat> kinda of wanna close these gaps in on the side. So I'm probably gonna cut some more sheet metal and add it to cover over our framework. So that way when you're looking at it, when it's open, you don't see like that gap. That kind of bothered me a little bit. All right, we made our little adjustments. We uh, took the material out of the back. Also rounded off these edges just to make it a little easier for me to get my fingers in there. So that's all ready to go, nice and cleaned up. You know, the front's secure to our frame. Go ahead and clean this up and get it back in the truck. Door is in, everything is looking real good. Right now I got a piece of wood propped it up, propping it up. This is about as high as the door really ever needs to go. Probably even higher than it should, but that way, you know, it shows off all the goodies when we're out at the shows. So next step is these here, electric actuators from Chuck C. These things are pretty badass, man. Well, well built, all uh, marine grade product. I believe he makes all this stuff himself. It does come with a toggle switch. So we have two of these. What Andrew and I are gonna do right now is temporarily hook up a battery to these to the switch and put it through its stroke, see the motion and see just exactly where and how we're gonna mount these things. All right, we just went through the motion of the actuator and there's really only one spot this thing could go. And unfortunately, our compressor is in the way. So we do have the file in our plasma cutter. Really, the compressor just has to move over pretty much as tight as we can get to that vent. So it'd be sitting pretty close to our fill point right here, but that's not really an issue. So for now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and unbolt this compressor. Then we're gonna mock up the actuator probably off of this piece of steel, tube steel here, clamp it on somehow, and then it's gonna shoot straight up to our frame rail on our door. We'll kind of mock everything up, and then we'll go through the motion and make sure everything clears and it moves off freely before we go designing our new compressor bracket. Clamped here to our frame, and then it, it lays right there on our 
Oops. Yeah. Lays right there on our on our door frame. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put a popper through there just to hold it in. And then we'll be able to kind of go down with it and see what happens before I go uh, make my other tab. That way if I know if I gotta go up or, you know, I have I have an inch that I could go up, but if I have to change anything before I go weld all that together, I will. But I think that should work out pretty good, man. All right, so my first attempt on where I laid my bracket on the upper mount, as you see, didn't work. So when I shut the door where it was at, it didn't go down all the way. So uh, what I did was I closed the actuator completely, shut the door, and then I marked my upper mount and re it on. So now the door shuts all the way. Now I'll just uh, basically duplicate both mounting tabs, fix onto the door with some real hardware, not pop rivets, and it should be good. Then we just gotta modify the bracket for the air compressor and get that back on there. And then, then the fabrication is done. All right, there you go. We got both actuators on and everything is working almost perfectly. I mean, I give it a 99 out of 100. Also, we got good clearance back here on our wood. Okay, now that we got our door in with our actuators, everything's operating perfectly. Everything is looking real good. It's time to pull it all apart and paint. Gotta get all the trim off the door. Got to get it down to the frame so all the wood's coming off. Take the whole frame back out, paint everything, get it all ready to go to go back in. This should keep me busy for a couple days. Let's get this thing pulled apart. That was not fun. Got the whole left side of our bed frame on my welding table. I still need to go ahead and weld these up. I also got to finish welding these tabs on. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a light sand down, get it ready for some primer. frame has been painted it's been sitting around for a couple days curing so it's time to start the process of getting this truck back together so i'm going to start getting our framework back in all right all right now we got our frame all bolted back in looking pretty i'm gonna go ahead and mock up my fenders boom before I do any final sanding on those and before I paint them 
because if there's any adjustments I need to make, now would be the time. parts we're getting them things painted a couple little last little details that we're trying to accomplish here are some dents so we got a dent here we got a dent in the bottom driver's door there you go everybody meet jay say hi jay jay's hey, dent hi. repair so yeah jay jay came over to the shop on saturday oh look we're matching today jay uh, yes it's <laughs> like we planned it so jay, jay jay pulled up i was outside and jay handed me a pamphlet he does dent repair my man was so passionate about dents. I just had to have him come over here and give this thing a try. So yeah, he's got all his uh, PDR, right? PDR. Yeah, paintless dent removal. Paintless dent removal. Yeah, 24 years. This guy's a ninja. The, oh, the dent try. ninja. Well, I'm gonna let you do your thing, Jake. Jay did an awesome job. I couldn't be happier. We do have a little bit of body work to do down here on this dent that was down here on the door, but that was expected. He did tell me that before he did it. Tailgate is nice and smooth, almost perfect. Our dent over here is completely gone. So I give Jay two thumbs up, two. So, so you guys, much. if you are looking for a dent repair guy, check out Jay's dent repair. This man's got shops everywhere. He's Mr. Worldwide. We try Massachusetts, uh, uh, Portugal, Portugal, and uh, Florida right now. In Florida. So, if yeah. you guys are in any of those locations, you're looking for a dent guy, hit up our boy Jay. All right, now that we got our base coat laid down on all our parts, everything's ready to go. It's time to start clear coating. We also got our tailgate painted, top of the bedside and the intersection. That back wall was all painted. So now it is pretty much flawless. We got all our dents taken out, so it's time to clear coat. Also our lower door down there that we had to make that repair, so. Everything's got a base coat on it. We're gonna be using the Poppy's Gloss Clear. The truck is finally coated, clear coated, painted, frames in, painted, everything's painted, ready to go, man. Who wants to see this truck get put back together? This guy. All right, man, let's get to it. All right. 
night. That went pretty smoothly. Our door is in. We have all the correct hardware in place with all of our little vinyl or whatever you call that, plastic washers. It's operating absolutely perfectly. Those are one smooth actuators. Shout out Chuck C. Boom. Our fenders are in and fitment is uh, pretty much perfect, man. Nice and flat and even with the top of our bedside. The gap is very minimal on um, both sides. Looks good. Boom, boom. So we are ready to start putting the wood back in. bed of this truck is finally done man this was like a six week every day on it kind of job a lot of metal fabrication a lot of carpentry with wood a lot of paint and bodywork a lot of coating a lot of measuring a lot of sleepless nights but it is done and looks great man i'm happy with it so a couple little last little tidbits here we got some new emblems from my buddy andy at Custom Car Emblem, same dude who made our dime bag, obviously. These are LS3 supercharged. So those are gonna take place of this V8 350. Sweet, so we got these to throw on. We have our custom painted Chevy Emblem. Put that back on and this bezel for our tail light. This thing's been giving me trouble since day one. We're gonna get those uh, little pieces of trim on. We're gonna get our wheels back on. And I'm ready to drive this thing. Let's go. All right, man, I'll tell you what, it is finally about that time we are getting ready to hand dime bag over to David, the owner. Five weeks of some very tedious, detailed work, custom fabrication, custom carpentry, paint and body, building the hatch, putting all these electric actuators in, everything is functioning, everything looks great. I'm super happy with it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Last thing we gotta do is send this truck off to Dave, but that's gonna be in a later episode. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you guys are following along. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.